Hi folks, I'm Jared Bentley. You're watching the Johnson City Press Week in Review right here on johnsoncitypress.com. Hurricane Michael is the third most powerful hurricane ever recorded on U.S. mainland and it hit this past week with a fury. It, it devastated parts of Georgia and Florida, left several people dead and just a swath of devastation in its tracks and it's not completely done as of yet. Michael finally weakened to a tropical storm on Thursday, no longer a category 4 monster packing 155 mile per hour winds but it was still menacing the southeast with heavy rains, blustery winds, and possible spin-off tornadoes soaking areas swamped by epic flooding last month from Hurricane Florence. The storm was a weekend tropical depression going from a Category 2 on Tuesday to a Category 4 by the time it came ashore. More than 375,000 people up and down the Gulf Coast were ordered or urged to evacuate but it moved so fast that people didn't have much time to prepare and many ignored the warnings thinking they could ride it out. The storm affected many here in our region as well, raising the levels of creeks and rivers in Rome Mountain Thursday, causing floodwaters to block roads and wash out parts of others when they receded. Much of western North Carolina and southern Virginia experienced flooding as well. This is just the latest in a series of devastating storm events to hit the east coast and many hope it will finally begin to dawn on certain politicians that climate change is real and imminent. The Carter County Sheriff's Department reported on Wednesday that a man who had recently been charged with second degree murder had died from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. 64-year-old Steve Mac Miller was transported to Johnson City Medical Center where he was declared deceased after being severely wounded inside a residence. Miller was out on bond after being charged in the September 7th shooting of Alan Lyle Jansma in the parking lot of the McDonald's restaurant in Hampton. One of the biggest high school football games in recent memory is being played tonight in Greenville as the unbeaten Elizabeth and Cyclones travel to face the Green Devils. Elizabethan is ranked number three in Tennessee Class 4A and travels to take on number one ranked undefeated defending state champion Greenville with the Region 1 title on the line. Both teams are 3-0 in league play and 7-0 overall and neither team has had much of a challenge this year with the exception of Elizabethan's 36-34 season opening win over Science Hill, a team the Green Devils beat 42-0. This should be a good one folks. Good luck to everyone involved. If you're looking for something fun to do this weekend, Elizabethan is also hosting its first ever craft beer event, the Betsy Crafts and Drafts Festival. Scheduled for Saturday and Sunday at Joe O'Brien Field in Elizabethan, there will be great beer and food on hand, live music, and inflatables, and plenty of activities for the whole family. Admission is free for the festival, but you'll have to pay a little bit to partake at the beer garden. There are several live bands playing. I'm playing myself around 1 o'clock on Saturday. So if you get a chance to come out and enjoy yourself, please do. They would surely love to see you. There will be plenty there for everybody. Whatever you do this weekend, stay safe, respect your neighbor, and enjoy yourself. And hopefully we'll see you next week with another Week in Review right here at johnsoncitypress.com. I'm Jared Bentley. Thanks for watching.